Afunde peke Aiji kwaiko umerale ai Ariom Manden nam manden nem Indish na dum neba nubi ko nagitem If I'm gonna buy, I'm buying a new bike. Ma, I buy an crankra. I do hope that my request is granted. Where I come from, we do not stand on the protocol. You walk through the protocol. I'm based on that tradition. I do intend to recognize our host, Right Honorable Idu Igarewe and his lovely wife. As we all know, Right Honorable Igarewe is the member representing Afiko and Eda Federal Constituency. I call him. His Excellency, and he knows why I do that. I think Professor Ongpa was um, almost in the spirit when he was alluding to that fact. But we shall come back to that. It's a discussion for another day. I also want to recognize the chairman of the third Obodo Annual EKG Festival, Professor Ongpa M. Ongpa OFR, former Vice Chancellor, Abia State University, Uduru. Prof, it's our honor to have you all the way from Uturu to this place. You're welcome. I recognize the former President General Ohane Zendibo, Chief Gare Nachewo Egarewe Nagujawasa. I recognize the Executive Chairman Afigbo and Edha, local government areas, and all public and political office holders here present traditional rulers and custodians, our traditional institutions here present, spiritual leaders here present, representatives of various state institutions here present, distinguished members of the fourth estate of the realm, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by appreciating our host, Right Honorable Egariwe for instituting the Okudo Annual EKG Lecture Series. This is an indication that as a representative of the people of Afiko and other federal constituencies in the National Assembly, Right Honorable Egariwe is keeping with the lived experiences, yearnings and desires of his constituents. And I think this is what governance is all about. A conscious effort by those given mandate to serve, to keep in touch with the people that have given them mandate. I therefore appreciate Your Excellency, your commitment to the people of Afigo and Eda. Yawasa. I also want to appreciate members of the lecture series organizing committee for the good job they are doing and for inviting me to share my thoughts on this ceremony. Undoubtedly, the committee chaired by my elder brother, Professor Aroko, has perfectly blended traditional flavor with intellectual dynamism, which is the intellectual dynamism which has brought about a perfect blend of our gathering today. As we know, this lecture is the third in the series. The first lecture, Festivalization of Yam Culture and Modern Experiences among the Ahugo and Ada of Southeastern Nigeria, eminently delivered by Aroko, an erudite professor of history, contextualized our knowledge of the historical underpinnings and relevance of Uriji festival among the people of Afiku and Eda. The second lecture, Ahoje Njenje, the nexus of language, culture, and gender dynamism in Uriji Afiku and Eda festivals 
by my own sister, Professor Ungozi Emekawabia, a professor of English language, extrayed the gender dimensions of this festival. It is therefore evident that everything that needs to be said about the Iriji festival has been done by these great teachers among us. I therefore do not intend to deliver any lecture on the festival again, but to flag off for consideration and continued discussion, even outside this forum, fundamental issues that I consider of utmost importance to all of us as a people. However, without contradicting myself, let me add to the previous lectures that among other ceremonies which Edha and Afibo and by extension the Igbo nation have in common, Iriji festival appears the most renowned. Although the dates vary from community to community, the ceremony bears the same traditional and historical relevance. The festival is renowned not because of its attractiveness to the people, but also because of what it represents. For all intents and purposes, Iriji represents a tradition from farming, on to abundance, Abba. In Eda, for instance, the happiness that the tradition brings is depicted by the rendition of joyous songs at the sound of the village Ikoro when the Onyalom is sighted on EKG day. And please permit me to sing that song. Oroje makrimoko. Onugula heli bo heno. I'm a new friend, baby. Eda, noka. Eruko, noka. Apuni kelage, eye o lagale. Mbola keike. Ewada keike. Apuna, a traditional meal made from corn is not a food of choice but one that is eaten out of want and necessity. And he rigid herats the end of Akuna. The memorable scenario created at the sighting of the New Year reflects the joy that marks our survival of the Omu season. It is also a reflection of the totality of the hope that the average family in Eda and Afibo builds around Iriji on yearly basis. In Eda and Afiko, Iriji festival is also a time to demonstrate generosity and magnanimity and to show love to humanity. During Ikuri on Afo Ikelata Ji Day, the Osus within the community distribute large tubers of yams to their relatives and loved ones especially the less privileged in places far and near. This is done to reinforce our sense of oneness, communality, and common heritage. More importantly, Iriji for Eda and Afiko marks the beginning of a series of ceremonies and festivities that showcase the rich and massless peculiarities of our traditional educational process that culminates in the graduation from youthful age into adulthood. In Eda, for instance, the first of this series of ceremonies is the Eyegeya, and I learned that in the Eyegeya no mebata. Eyegeya is the climax of a very rich traditional process of incubation and nurturing of young girls into beautiful maidens of marriageable age and what. Ori Eyegeya is the night of the and I'm a Chris. When grooms lay in wait to receive their long awaited brides in a manner typical of what we described as hostile takeover in strategic studies. But more importantly, area and almost exclusively women affairs represent a modest attempt in our tradition and culture to ensure the inclusion of women in all women of all ages in our social life. It is therefore gratifying to note, ladies and gentlemen, that centuries before the Western world began its advocacy for gender mainstreaming and inclusivity, our people had institutionalized the practice. The 
monastery money is the ECG, literally interpreted to mean the climax of EEG festival. The details of this ceremony, which is almost exclusively for the men, are well known to us, especially among the initiates of the Ebola culture. So I may not need to dwell on it. I have taken time to emphasize the importance and relevance of EEG to make the point that the festival, however celebrated, is the embodiment of our identity as a people. It is one festival that tells our story, depicts our origin, as well as the peculiarities of our way of worship and thanksgiving. It is the celebration of the totality of our existence as a people. However, the Rigi festival, despite what it represents, has come under sustained criticism, especially by Christian Orthodoxy and Pentecostalism. The criticisms have significantly projected the associated ceremonies in negative light and tended to diminish their relevance. The central thesis of this criticism is that the practices associated with the festival, such as the sacrifices to Kufijoku, the god of harvest, and the processes of initiation into Ebola culture, are rooted in idolatrous and occultic practices. It is also argued by the adherents of Christianity that the demonic powers associated with these ancient practices have not only kept generations of our people in bondage, but also away from God. For the records, as a born-again Christian and ordained minister of the gospel, I share in this belief system. But that is a discussion for another day. Be that as it may, my reflections on this age-long festival for greater good and impact and in ways that advance our development as a people. This has become imperative in light of contemporary realities. In advancing my argument, I will make two fundamental proposals. First, I think it is important we begin to refocus EREG Festival to serve as a venue for the economic empowerment of our people. Experiences from across the world show increasing efforts by societies to convert traditional and cultural practices to income generating events for their people. From the Olympics, which began some 3,000 years ago in ancient Greece as a religious celebration in honor of the god of Zeus, to the Colosseum in Italy, Rome, which was used for gladiatory contests and public spectacles, including executions in medieval era, societies are refocusing the festivals for greater good. Bangkok in Thailand is home to the biggest Buddhist temple in the world. In 2013, I visited Bangkok on a study fellowship and I was among the 26.6 million tourists that visited the Buddhist temple in that city in that particular year and that made the city the most visited in the world. From visiting tourists alone, Bangkok raked in over 26.4 million US dollars. In fact, in Rome, the Colosseum contributes roughly 1.4 billion US dollars yearly to Italy's GDP. In fact, in late July 2023, when I attended a United Nations program, there were calls to restrict the number of daily visitors to the Colosseum to enable the completion of the ongoing renovation expected to raise the worth of the Colosseum to 79 billion US dollars. In the Vatican City, the museums and the basilica draw in over 6 million visitors and generate at least 120 million dollars in ordinary ticket sales alone. Ladies and gentlemen, refocusing our ceremonies along this line have become imperative. 
beside the direct and indirect jobs that will move thousands of our teaming youths away from poverty, crime, and criminality, it will provide opportunity to showcase our culture and traditional practices to the outside world. The foundations for this refocusing are already laid in the natural potentials of our festivals, embedded in the inherent displays of Eiria, as we will see today, and local festivals, among others, are tourist attractions, not different from the street parties that we all travel to Europe and watch on yearly basis. I do acknowledge, however, that this process of refocusing will require the buy-in and commitment of all stakeholders, especially the state authorities. But it is instructive to point out that experiences from nearby crossover states with the Calabar Annual Cultural Festival are indicative of the viability and benefit of such ventures, not just for the government, but also to the localities within the state. Let me therefore use this forum to call on a boy state government to work towards the development of the strategic plan for the remodeling of the Iriji Festival, starting with Eda and Afibo. We may begin with the synchronization of the dates to make Iriji hold on the same day across Eda and Afibo. That will be for greater impact. <laughs> My second proposal for us is to refocus Iriji Festival to serve as a rallying point for societal reflection and redirection. After centuries of celebration, the festival should begin to serve as an opportunity for appraisal of development in our communities and the evolution of appropriate responses to circumstances that threaten our existence as a people. In this regard, let me once again very profoundly thank Right Honorable Egariwe for instituting this annual lecture series. By this, he has set in motion the very important platform that seeks to bring together the best and the brightest that Ed and Afipo can boast of as a people. But beyond the lectures, Iriji Festival should serve as a time to question societal anomalies. The circumstances of our present existence makes this imperative and urgent. First, the increasing rate of out-of-school children in our communities and the involvement of our youth in crime and criminality, including kidnapping for ransom and cultism, are not only troubling, but they also undermine our identity and threaten our future. This development should form core issues of reflection at Iriji. When new secessionist groups destroy the things that are dear to our hearts in the name of separatist agitations, EREG should provide a platform and forum to challenge such developments. Our host, Right Honorable Egariwe and his wife, Chairman of today's event, Professor Nkwa, Chairman and members of the organizing committee, Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by inviting everyone here today to continue to reflect on how best to refocus our celebrations, to advance our development. Let us reflect on how best to utilize the EREG Festival to advance our society by challenging events that threaten our existence. It is my considered opinion that in refocusing our ceremonies for the greater good and impact, we will be advancing our development. Once again, I appreciate you for inviting me and for listening to me. Thank you very much.